Welcome everyone to the 10th episode of Fundamentals of Research in Medicine with Professor Fikri Abuzidan. Uh, today we will talk about uh, data collection and its coding and how to use the data in your research. Thank you Arf again and uh, I think uh, this is a very important uh, uh, moment now. We are moving from planning to acting. Uh, and all what we've been discussing before about the idea, how to make a protocol, how to make a plan, how to get the approval to do what you do, and now this comes the exciting moment. And of course you have a protocol. And I, I know the young people now uh, like to have uh, computers and databases. The first important thing I like to stress before you collect data, to have the idea of importance of backing up your data before even you start. Why is that? That's the first important thing. I have an experience of even a PhD student story who had put all his, his data on the shelf for three years and the lab got burned and he lost his PhD. We have personal data ourselves, you would be surprised, Arif. We had one of the best data in obstructive uh, uropathy in the world. I've been working when I was young on how to do ureteric occlusions and we used to put a sheep in a radioisotope scan in Kuwait University. Amazing information with histopathology, radioisotope scanning and we didn't have a backup and three years of our own work was lost. One of my colleagues, a recent uh, Italian guy who had some data on the computer, there was an earthquake that destroyed the computer and the data was lost. I'll tell you this personal story with my own research fellow. I always teach him to have a backup, at least two backups, two backups at two physically different spaces. So he had worked for six months in, 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 in a hospital here in the city, collecting trauma data for six months. And then he wants to move outside from home. And he took the hard disk which is supposed to carry the backup and put it in the bag. What's the mistake here? They are physically in the same place. So he left the bag on the wall and he went to take a lunch for one hour for fast food. And once he came back, a thief has taken the bag with everything. So the first thing, please start to get a back up. Number two. I am an old man and Arif is also, he's a very high tech man, but I always still stress with my old residents or trainees to have a hard copy. Believe me, my registry collected over four years hard copies beside the soft copies. Why? Because in the hard copies you can sometimes add small notes beside this information and it's a backup for you. I know this may, hap may, may not happen in your life, but if it happens once, you may be collecting data for three years or your PhD and you will lose it. Thirdly, understand your protocol. People may start collecting data without understanding what does it mean. And I have that experience of people not knowing the difference between intentional and non-intentional injury. And of course, if you enter data which is wrong, people will not know that they enter the data. So we depend on your honesty to put the data. Fourth, I advise you yourself to start collecting data from the start. Don't feel, oh, that I'm, you're a big man or you're a great man at the beginning and you ask someone to collect you or the nurse to collect for you or whoever to collect for you. You have to collect the data yourself because you will learn a lot. I remember when I did the study on abdominal tuberculosis about 30 years ago and I have to dig into the files to try to look at the files. I learned how to follow the file like, you know, you say, Charlie Holmes, you should follow that file till you get it. And people get surprised actually, how you, you can really, you really try to find different, you just fall out, you will find it. The other thing, you have to understand the data itself. You have to understand the difference between categorical data, ordinal data, and, and so on. So, uh, and the way you collect the data, shall you collect it as a tick? Shall you collect it as a text? How much text you should really, like for example, if you speak about, uh, in a, mechanism of injury or environments. You have to write a lot of details. So take details that really can fill your data. The other advice is I like you to collect data prospectively. What does that mean? You are in the meeting in the morning and you are doing a study and you know there is a patient 
who just came with this with this condition don't say oh i'll do it later on the patient would have been discharged anyway or gone away you just go directly that is the easiest and simplest and most effective way is to collect the data on the run between after you finish you you keep your papers with you usually i keep these uh, uh, hard copies within my uh, within my bag and as even as a consultant professor, I was interested in camera related injuries. I know there is a case coming in. People will call me. Believe me, I would leave everything, go and collect the data because that's more cost effective. If you want really to locate a file later on, this file may be lost. You really get more time going three, four times to the man. As some of the cases, I went three, four times to get a specific thing which the reviewers wanted from us. So if you follow these pr simple principles, we say, the quality of the research depends on the quality of the data. data. So don't underestimate yourself. Even if you are young, if you are collecting data, do it yourself. Try to enjoy doing it, even although it's a tedious work. But believe me, the quality of the research will depend on what you do, even as a young student or a young researcher. So yeah. that's my message to you, please, from really, uh, <laughs> uh, right, from my heart to you, if you want to succeed, because the quality of if your paper depends on the quality of your paper. That's that, simple. <laughs> that's simple, Arif, yes. <laughs> yes, thank you, Prof. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank I you hope much. that's useful for me.